Good morning to all of you. Good morning. You may be seated. As we open these commencement exercises, we will remind you to please turn off all cell phones and other electronic devices for the duration of the program. We also would ask that everyone avoid talking or moving about in order that we give due respect to this very joyful and meaningful occasion. I know you've all gotten comfortably seated, but now I'm going to ask you to stand again <laughs> for the invocation which will be led by our Reverend Dr. Natalie McLean, the college chaplain. Please remain standing for the posting of the colors by the Girl Scout Service Unit 22 from Mount St. Matthew's United Methodist Church, followed by the African American Anthem, which will be led by the Bennett College Choir. Let us bow together in prayer. Good morning, Lord. What a glorious day you have made for this joyous celebration. We thank you for all this day represents, the tenacity of our graduates, the prayers and support of families and communities, and the challenge and support of dedicated faculty and staff. Ultimately, God, this day is the revelation of your will and your timing for your daughters. Through pain and excitement, these young women were birthed into this world. And amid trials and triumphs, we too have labored with these precious, poised, and prepared young women as they are birthed into the future of your design, filled with grace and power and great victory. Thank you, Lord, for the speaker for this occasion. Open our hearts to receive the gift of her message. Lord, we also recognize your favor and the outpouring of love from our alumni and those who are passionate about this institution. We praise you for the outpouring of over $800,000 to continue the rich legacy of education, grace, dignity, and sisterhood here at Bennett College. All glory, praise, and honor belong to you in the precious name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. colors. Please join us in saying the, the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Color Guard dismissed.
Thank you, choir. You may be seated. Following the scripture readings by Ms. Tanya Jackson, class of 2014, and Ms. Kiana Scott, class of 2014, the program will proceed as printed. Ms. Jackson. Good morning. Good morning. The Old Testament reading will be coming from Psalms 150. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with the string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high, high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. I will be reading from the New Testament, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3-8. through 8. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and goodness through our knowledge of Him who has called us by His own glory and goodness. Through these, He has given us His very great and precious promise so that through them we may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. Amen. Before we have our selection, we have a young lady, a little child, no more than four years old, who cannot find her parents. She's with the Brownie Troop. She is standing over here. If someone brought her. Okay, all right. She's standing over here. Okay, thank you. We found them, we've located them. Thank you very much. And now, you're in for a royal treat. Uh, I am so pleased to present to you for a musical selection, the Bennett College Choir, under the direction of Ms. Valerie D. Johnson, and accompanied by Ms. Rochelle Joyner.
Oh, it's okay if you give them another round of applause. Greatly to be praised. What a wonderful occasion it is as we witness and celebrate the beginning, the commencement of a new phase in the lives of these candidates for graduation. Congratulations to the class of 2014. But of course, you did not do it all by yourselves. Your parents and other members of your family, supporters, friends, were behind you, in front of you, all around you. They were your support system, your financial lifeline. And sometimes they believed in you when you were not sure you believed in yourselves. So parents, grandparents, family, friends, siblings, supporters, would you please stand now and receive our gratitude for all that you've done for us. And of course, graduates, you could have not gotten to this intellectual place that you're at without the faculty. They have been your partners in the great enterprise of teaching and learning. And of course, the staff of Bennett College has been there for you also. What a great moment this is when we can applaud all who have made this day possible for you. With the faculty and staff, please stand. And of course, we are very, very grateful to know that we don't have supporters just here in this house of Bennett College, but we have those who have sprung from this house and gone on to the state house, and they still love us that they get up early on a Sunday morning to come and be with us. We have our own representative, Alma Adams, here with us, one of our own one of our own representing Greensboro and we're so pleased to have her with us. We also have in the class that's celebrating its 50th class reunion and you're not going to be able to tell them, I'm telling you from the graduates. <laughs> 50th year class reunion, we have the Honorable Mayor Pro Tem Yvonne Johnson with us this morning. Thank you so very much. Are there any other elected officials that I've overlooked this morning from wherever? I know there's another elected official in this 50th class. Stand on up. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so very much for being with us. I'd also at this time like to, like to recognize those that are great supporters of this college. And they have the awesome responsibility of leading and governing the college. I would ask if you would please hold your applause until all the names have been called. With us this morning is Chairman of our Board of Trustees, Chairman Charles Barentine, Trustee Mariah Allen, Trustee Rick Anacetti, Trustee Christy Clayton, Trustee Sally Cohn, Trustee Joyce Dixon, Trustee Deborah Foster, Trustee Susie Johnson, Trustee Deborah Love, Trustee Carla McLucas, Trustee Luke Visconti, and Trustee Eric Watson. Please join me in saluting this wonderful support system. And I have personal support here today, so if you don't mind a point of personal privilege, I have my sister here joining me this day. Uh, Lydia Mason and her friend Terry are here joining us today. Would you all please stand? Thank you so very much. And of course, I could not do this if I didn't have the wind beneath my wings, the joy of my life. One that makes my heart beat every morning with a little skip and a beat. Is my first gentleman, the first gentleman of the college, Dr. Jarvis Hall. At this time, it's my pleasure to present the chairman of our board of trustees, Mr. Charles Barrington, who will bring you greetings. 
Uh, thank you, Dr. Fusehall. Uh, good morning to all of you. Good morning. Uh, to the members of the Board of Trustees, uh, Dr. Fusehall, Provost Blackwell, and other members of the leadership team. To the deans, the faculty, staff, and other administrators, to our alumni, particularly those in reunion, especially the honor class of 1964. To the family members and supporters of our honored guests, and yes, to our honored guests, the graduating class of 2014. Welcome to these commencement ceremonies. It is a beautiful day. And it's not just a beautiful day, because the sky is blue. And believe me, we are very thankful for that. <laughs> it's a beautiful day because of you. Now, from time to time, we always talk about pausing and reflecting. It's always a backward look. Let's take this time, this moment, right now, to reflect on what this occasion is about and reflect on all of those smiling faces in our graduating class of 2014. Take a look at each other. Remember this moment, because it is special. Our seniors are very blessed to have surrounded them this morning by people that love and care about them. And these people, they also care about. We know now that the sacrifices that were made were not in vain. We know that not only prayers were heard, but they were answered. We have seen tears of joy from last night all through this morning because we know that before those tears of joy, there were a lot of other kind of tears shed in order for this moment to happen. Yes, dreams do come true, <clears throat> and like Kanisha King said last night to Valedict Victoria in the class, this is a new beginning. It is not the end. So this morning, we are, we are gathered here to celebrate the accomplishments of students that came to Bennett to learn, but who will depart here, and they will be equipped with knowledge to serve as leaders in psychology, biology, social work, business and journalism, and other majors, just to name a few. Bennett College has over 140 years where they've developed intellectual leaders for communities, corporations, and countries around the world. Faculty members have engaged students and assisted them in shopping their presentation skills, their leadership skills, their team building activities, and set high standard to develop them to their fullest potential. Graduates, your presence today demonstrate that you accepted these challenges and you succeeded in meeting Bennett's standards. And as a result, you are receiving your degrees. We encourage you to continue to pursue advanced degrees, remembering that your firm foundation was built here at Bennett College. Please know that the Board of Trustees and the Bennett College community are very proud of you and we congratulate you on all that you have achieved. Thank you. I think someone said it earlier that uh, we are built on those who have come before us. And I wanted to just reserve a special time for you all to view two of the wonderful foundational pillars for this college. The honor class of 1964 is celebrating its 50th anniversary as graduates today and they are with us. With the honor class, please stand as a unit and receive our welcome home to each and every one of you. Now remain standing. Yesterday and throughout this year, the alumni 
of this grand and great college have been responsible and presented to this college yesterday $800,000. Would all alumni please stand and receive our warm appreciation for all that you do to keep us alive and well. Thank you so very much. We love you and we appreciate all that you do for each of us. The faculty, the staff, you truly are what keeps us moving. At this time, we will have the senior address given by Ms. Unique Edwards, president of the senior class. Ms. Edwards, would you please come forward? <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Board of Trustees, President Dr. Fuse Hall, Provost Dr. Blackwell, Associate Provost Dr. Ward, alumni, especially those celebrating their 50th year anniversary, faculty, staff, family, friends, loved ones, and guests of the college, welcome. My name is Unique Troy Edwards. I am a senior international business major, and I currently serve as the senior class president. It is my esteemed pleasure to stand before you and welcome you to our commencement convocation. Bennett College's history dates back to the emancipation of slavery and continues to flourish past the 50th year anniversary of the March on Washington and two terms of an African American president. It is with great pride that the class of 2014 stands before you to be a part of that legacy. It is said that the brave may not live forever, but the cautious do not live at all. I am proud of the women before you because they were not, and I repeat, not cautious. Many defied stereotypes, overcame financial burdens, triumphed negative attitudes, or embarked on this journey from thousands of miles away. But we have made it. Despite the misconception, these women have received a holistic education with determination, discipline, and excellence. Bennett is our oasis that has taught us our rights as women, scholars, and future leaders while providing each lady with her own privileges to her growth. I appreciate Ben in her entirety. Her efforts, strife, and opportunity make her who she is. She encourages our rights to prosper regardless of our pigment. She limits the amount of time our male counterparts spend on campus. But in turn, <laughs> in return, she nourishes our inner gifts and helps us to flourish into leaders that are going to impact this world in a monumental way. Marcus Garvey once said, and I quote, if 40,000 Negroes can only get to know themselves, to know that in them is a sovereign power, is an authority that is absolute, then in the next 24 hours, we could have a new race, a nation, an empire, resurrected not from the will of others to see us rise, but from our own determination to rise, irrespective of what the world thinks. Today, we do not have 40,000, but 104 Bennett Bells that are embarking on their various paths from this moment forward and will be agents of change in their fields. Throughout, the throughout our matriculation, the class of 2014 has worked for the Walton family, interned with Nestle, traveled the world, and worked for federal administrative offices, yet the values Bennett has instilled remain. Many of us have said that I did not choose Bennett, rather Bennett chose me. Many friends move on because they do not feel this is the place for them. However, the faith that we have continuously stepped out on has provided much truth and foundation for this institution. Yes, we are growing and developing, but one thing remains the same. We are here to develop quality, not quantity. Her story reflects each and every one of us. As we rejoice for our final matriculation, I inform you that you will all be deeply missed. No matter where, when you enter or where life may take you, you will always be a Bennett Bell. As you progress through life, never let the innate light the innate light that you have shown and shown to help motivate your sisters dim. Lastly, you either know the need or have seen the need, so I charge you all to be that need. Thank you. And now, under the direction of the United Methodist Church Faculty Member of the Year, who also serves as our choir director, Ms. Valerie Johnson, and once again, accompanied by Mrs. Rochelle Joyner, please hear from our distinguished Bennett Choir.
choir, exquisite as always. I now have some very special presentations to make. Just a couple. Although this day will focus and celebrate our graduates, it is also a time for us to pause and say thank you to two men who have served this college with unwavering commitment by investing their time and corporate resources to ensure that Bennett College transitioned not one, not two, but three presidents to Safe Harbor, Chairman Charles Barentine and Trustee Luke Visconti. First, Trustee Luke Visconti. He began serving as a trustee in about 2005 to assist Dr. Janetta Cole with an initiative on diversity. As the CEO and founder of Diversity Inc., which he launched as a website in 1997 and has guided it to the leading publication for diversity, ranked one globally for total web traffic and social media reach. Diversity Inc. has almost 90,000 Facebook likes and Twitter followers, more than 250,000 email newsletter subscribers, and close to 200,000 people recognize the magazine. His annual contributions have sustained scholarships for several students here at Bennett College. Trustee Visconti's tenure will end on June 30th, 2014. But for your invaluable service and support to Bennett College, please come forward at this time and accept this token of appreciation. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm, I'm kind of overcome. I, uh, it's been 10 years I've been coming to your campus to be part of your family, and I was invited here by Dr. Cole. And I want to just spend a couple of minutes to um, thank the one group of people that has helped me more than any other group in my life, my knowledge, my understanding of humanity, and my business, and that's black women. I've had, I've had more help from black women than any other group. And I want to just name a few. The best boss I had in the Navy was Cynthia Miller. She's, we're still friends. We have lunch every so often. She was a proud graduate of a historically black college and taught me about the importance of historically black colleges, of which I was ignorant when, when I was in the Navy. I had no idea. I was just a, a white guy growing up in New Jersey. I didn't know from that. And she taught me from the goodness of our heart how important this is. Dr. Cole, who invited me onto campus and we developed a relationship and she invited me onto her board. May Snowden, a corporate executive who's now retired, who, who gave me every kindness and knowledge and brought me into her fold. Bernice Venerable, a retired superintendent of schools in New Jersey, who lobbied for two years to make me a distinguished alumnus of Rutgers, Rutgers where I came from, um, for which I had to apologize to all of the other distinguished alumni for lowering our aggregate GPA by a full point. <laughs> Carolyn 
Jim Johnson, my chief operating officer, who is my succession plan for my business, I walked her down the aisle because her father has post-traumatic stress disorder from Vietnam. I'm the godfather of her, of her little daughter and she's my succession plan. She's been my loyal right hand for 11 years. And I also am so happy to see my friend Margot Copeland. I have been invited to speak in Ohio more than any other state. Part of that reason is because Ohio is the crossroads of the Underground Railroad, something that is, when you look at it on a map, you see how important the state of Ohio was. And Margot, who has labored endlessly to help people who are underprivileged, I was worried about the president's re-election. I was concerned because we were in the worst economy since the Great Depression. But I called Margot on election day and I said, where are you? And she said, Cuyahoga County. And I knew that the president was going to be re-elected. And when you saw Karl Rove have a meltdown on Fox TV, it was because of, of, because of people like Margot Copeland who got out the vote. And now, mind you, because of people like Margot Copeland, African Americans vote more on a percentage basis than white people in this country. And if we can keep that trend going, perhaps we could keep that arc going towards justice more rapidly than it was before. So I, I want to conclude my comments by saying that this isn't the end, Dr. Fuse Hall. After 10 years, I have to leave the board because of the bylaws. I've already volunteered to help with your new degree in entrepreneurship. Um, and, if we form, and if you form a board of visitors, I will serve on that. And in the spirit of Lyman Bennett, who heard what was going on here and from New York, contributed money to this school, I will continue to contribute money annually so that this school may live on and we may stand forever on the ground of land that was purchased by emancipated and enslaved people just years after the Civil War. Thank you for allowing me to be part of your family. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, our chairman, Charles Barentine was initially a Bennett dad. His daughter is a member of the class of 2001. He was so impressed by the service Bennett College provided that he has found a way to work with Bennett ever since. He is a retired corporate executive from Kodak. He joined the board in 2004 and became chairman in 2011 and has made so many trips from his home in Jacksonville, Florida to Greensboro that I understand the Guilford County Tax Office is threatening to charge him a residency fee. <laughs> he works tirelessly on behalf of this college and I mean tirelessly. He's always finding a way to work Bennett College into any conversation he has with a corporate executive that he believes should give to Bennett College. He has been an outstanding chair of this board with his persistence to bring resources to the college. His tenure will end on June 30th, 2014, but we couldn't let him go without a word of thanks and recognition for your loyal and steadfast support as the Bennett College parent and trustee. Please come forward, Chairman Barentine, for this small token of appreciation. Oh my God, mm -hmm. a hammer. <laughs> thank you. Oh, you're quite welcome. Do you want to say something? Yes, I'll just take a moment, please. So thank you very much. First of all, let me just acknowledge uh, Luke Visconti. Congratulations, Luke, and thank you for all your support. I'm sure after listening to uh, your comments, people know exactly why you were such a great, great trustee. And also, I would also like to acknowledge my fellow trustees who had enough confidence and trust in me to allow me to continue uh, to try to provide leadership to this college. Dr. Fuss Hall mentioned that my daughter was a uh, graduate of Bennett, and I just want to just take one moment to uh, say maybe two things about that. Um, we did the Black College Tour, and I remember when we came on campus, you know, there was a lot of uh, work that needed to be done, particularly to the buildings, and there was a lot of things that people didn't have that they had in modern school. We didn't have air conditioning, and we did have a, another young lady on this tour with us, and when we walked on campus, 
she said, Trustee Barrington, surely you're not going to take any money from this school. You need to be giving money to this school. <laughs> and uh, uh, on the way, while we were here, uh, the president spoke with my daughter and told her why she should come to Bennett. And uh, I should tell you that I'm not sure how high it was on our list. It was on the list, but it wasn't that high on the list. And on the way home, the young lady was just bad mouth and Bennett, bad mouth and Bennett, how it looked and what it was like. And my daughter turned and said, Bennett is about more than brick and mortar. And, uh, and we said, well, we're going to talk to you about what school you're going to. She said, no, you're not. I already know where I'm going. And uh, she came to Bennett. And uh, earlier this year, I mentioned the two C's, capability and confidence. And I would tell you that, you know, I'm a product of a historical black college from the science side, you know, chemistry and that kind of stuff. And I was always concerned about, you know, what it was that I would miss when I went to a bigger school, you know, one of those 40,000 schools that had every piece of equipment. And we, was, we shared the same concern with her. But to, no problem. Just glanced through everywhere she went. And uh, I think there is something here in Bennett. It's not English 101 or Math 203 or whatever the numbers are. It is an invisible piece that instills confidence and capability in our young women who have enough courage and strength and tenacity to do anything they choose. And so I'm thankful that I've had an opportunity to be part of this. And probably the greatest gift one can get is the privilege and the honor to serve on this board. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the distinct privilege this morning to introduce an extraordinary woman to you. Her many outstanding accomplishments are listed in your program. But I am pleased to introduce you to a real live super shero. Now you've heard about Wonder Woman, who was formed from clay by the queens of the Amazon. Well, our speaker was birthed to a preacher and a math teacher. Her upbringing imbued her with the attributes that of the Greek and Roman gods. Beautiful as Aphrodite, smart as Athena, as swift as Hermes, and as strong as Hercules. Her training gave her limited telepathic skills. Mortals call this vision. Profound scientific knowledge. I mean, her undergraduate degree is in physics, and her graduate degree is in educational research and statistics. And she has proven that she has the ability to speak many languages known to man and beyond, even cavemen and Martian languages. <laughs> I think that's why she's able to successfully work with so many executives. <laughs> Most of them are men. <laughs> well, that's our speaker. She equips herself with a lasso of truth. Sometimes her colleagues will remark that she just wants to know the essence of an issue. What is the true hindrance? And most importantly, how do we make it better? With her lasso, she ties up the naysayers, places them in a corner where they can do no harm, and goes about accomplishing the task at hand before embarking upon her next mission. Most people look at her bracelets and see jewelry, unaware that they merely symbolize the indestructible love that she has for women and the power of their potential. She embraces the idea that in service to others, without fanfare or fame, working together can raise enough money to own your own national headquarters, make it financially sound, and create a process to sustain its future. Now that's love for generations long beyond those that she will see. Like all superheroes, super sheroes, she walks among us with a secret identity. Most days and nights, she serves as the CEO and chair of KeyBank Foundation. Although the secret has gotten out because she was listed as one of the 100 most powerful women in Cleveland by New Cleveland Woman Magazine. And in 2012, Savoy Magazine included her in a list of the 100 most influential blacks in corporate America. 
She is also the recipient of the YWCA Career Woman of Achievement Award. More importantly, she is Mentor Projet Program Advisor for our brother institution, Morehouse College. And she is a bell at heart because her favorite color is blue. <laughs> Please join me in welcoming my Shiro and mentor, today's commencement speaker, Ms. Margot James Copeland. But let me just say um, a good morning to all of you and um, also to the uh, outstanding Board of Trustees of Bennett College, especially my dear friend, Luke Visconti and Joyce Dixon. Um, I want to just tell you what an extraordinary job that you have done in bringing the visionary, the extremely capable and the energetic president, Dr. Rosalind Fuse Hall. What a marvelous, marvelous choice you have made. And we are so very, very proud of you, my sister, and all that we know that you will accomplish on this very historic and beautiful, for this very historic and beautiful school. Um, now parents, I have been in your seat three times. I have three adult children, three with bachelor's degrees and two with advanced degrees. So I know that when I went to these exercises, I can't barely tell you who the commencement speaker was. And I had even less recollection of what he or her had to say. So I will be brief because I know this is the show that we're waiting for right now. <laughs> but I would like to do one thing before I start my remarks. Dr. Fuse Hall, will you please step forward? It's my understanding that you have been very successful in raising a lot of money especially over the last several months. I want to just add some encouragement to that. So on behalf of the Board of Directors of the KeyBank Foundation, we'd like to present a check for Girls, bells, when you get to a place where you can do something for somebody, do it. Well, I will go ahead. I just said to her, I said to your president, I said, now you know I wasn't going to come empty handed. <laughs> so I am so honored with this invitation. And I said to her jokingly when she called me, I said, you want me to be your first commencement speaker? But anyway, it is just my honor and I will treasure this for the rest of my life. The very purpose of our life is happiness, which is sustained by hope. We have no guarantee about the future, but we exist in the hope of something better. Hope means to keep going, thinking, I can do this. This really can happen for me. It brings inner strength, self-confidence, and the ability to do what you do honestly, truthfully, and transparently. The words of the Dalai Lama. The theme of my address today is living a good life. For most of you in the class of 2014, you are now at the omega of your smaller life and the alpha of your larger life. The beginning of a new thing, true adulthood. How many times as a child did you say, I can't wait to grow up. I can't wait until I'm grown. When I'm grown out of my mama's house, etc etc well ladies this is your time and you are now officially with college degree in hand all grown up with all the rights privileges and responsibilities here too but seriously i want you to know how immensely proud we all are of you for all that you've accomplished and achieved during this past four to five years. So now that you have achieved this most desired stage in life, the alpha, the beginning of your larger life, I suggest that you ask yourself, what will I do with the rest of my life? 
Now, in order to bring clarity to that question, I'm not asking you to consider that job offer that you just accepted or even contemplate your graduate degree pursuits, for they are only a means to an end. I want you to ask yourself, what will I do with the rest of my life? In truth, as you ponder this question, it matters not what you want for your life. Want is material, tangible, things, stuff, position, power, all temporary. I challenge you to think about what you will do with this blessed gift of life that our Father in Heaven has given to you. Embedded in this question is a quest for self-intent. What is your intention? What is your purpose? How will you use your God-given gifts to create a life that matters? A good life is built on some relatively simple principles. In my view, they are excellence, humility, honesty, gratitude, service, selflessness, love. Let's talk about excellence. This is not to be confused with perfection because no one is perfect. Excellence means to be good, very good, at what you do, whether it's in your relationships and or your vocation. It's very important to remember that your excellence journey, or rather your pursuit of excellence, is free and must be in your life, free of excuses. Excuses, what should have been, could have been, if only this had happened, someone prevented this, this circumstance got in the way, Excuses, excuses, excuses. Excuses have no place in an excellence journey. In fact, excuses are the tools of the incompetent. In an excellence journey, excellence requires our best at all times, even when we feel a bit less than our best. I want you to also remember that sometimes things just don't work out. When you get to that place where you've given your best, and it's still not enough. You may want to consider what a mentor of mine suggested to me several years ago. Repot yourself. Change locations or situations like a plant for it to flourish and grow. You must take it from a smaller pot to a larger pot. You may have to from time to time in your life repot yourself. But when you do, keep excellence as your guiding principle. Humility. Never rise so high that you can't sustain a fall. In other words, life will toss you some curves, some expected and many unexpected. If you win an award, get recognized for your good work or deed, get elected to a position of promise and power, or win the lottery. The moment you think it's about you and all you, you will seal your tomb. We all hang from a single and fragile thread. We are interconnected one to the other. Humility means never taking yourself so seriously that you forget to smile, laugh, and from time to time poke fun at yourself. In addition, allow others the opportunity to grow and advance. It's not about you, it's not about me, it's about all of us. Give others face time, air time, the visibility that they too need to succeed. Humility also includes knowing your own capacity and limitations. Know your strengths and spend your lifetime employing and leveraging what you're good at, leveraging your strengths. Know your weaknesses and your flat side and spend your lifetime avoiding jobs, tasks, courses, and situations that limit your chances of success. To do that, you must be totally honest with yourself, which leads to the next principle, honesty. To thine own self be true. If you haven't already, I suggest that you find a quiet place to have a clear and focused conversation with yourself. Allow yourself to look at yourself, evaluate yourself, critique and praise yourself. Ask yourself, can I really accomplish this task? Is this the right job for me? Do I truly have the skills for this project? Should I be in this relationship? Of course we know that honesty also goes hand in hand with integrity. All the money in the world cannot buy integrity or a good name. But a good name 
or integrity can and will position you in the loftiest and most special places in life. Your word is truly your bond, telling the truth and being truthful, honest, reliable, dependable, and sincere will take you further in life than money could ever buy. Gratitude. A grateful heart is a blessed heart, and a grateful spirit attracts goodness and mercy. Being grateful for simple things, everyday day things, like a beautiful day, especially when it's graduation day. Be grateful for a safe drive to work. Be grateful for your friends, your family. Never take a normal day for granted. Normalcy is good. It is a good thing. Gratefulness is the expression of your appreciation and interdependence with the order of the universe. Bless each and every day and show and demonstrate thankfulness for opportunities earned and even unearned. Know that someone is always watching you and it's the little things that count. Service. Everybody can be great because everybody can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and your verb agree to serve. You don't have to know about Plato and Aristotle to serve. You don't have to know Einstein's theory of relativity to serve. You don't have to know the second theory of thermodynamics in physics to serve. You only need a heart full of grace, a soul generated by love. The words of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. I have absolutely nothing else to add on my own to the topic of service. I think Dr. King has said it all. I attempt to live by Dr. King's definition of service each and every day, and his words have served as my guiding principles for true service and respect and appreciation of all mankind. Selflessness. Be spiritually strong in your own right, confident in who you are and whose you are. Another's rise is a cause for celebration. It should not be a point of pain or envy. Another's success does not diminish or take anything away from you. Envy and jealousy are tools of demons and can eat away and destroy your inner being and your soul. Giving yourself for another's benefit and valuing yourself so that you understand and appreciate another's success or their distress are measures of a successful life. Being there for others in times of great happiness and in times of sorrow makes us agents of goodness and kindness and the evidence of grace. In addition, selflessness is also demonstrated by the best leaders in this country. They attract and surround themselves with people who are smarter than they are. Having a strong sense of self to lift as you climb, identifying talent and advancing and promoting the desires and ambition of others makes you stronger and a contributor to all that is right and good. And love. And the greatest of these is love. There is a light inside of each of us a light that is placed in and is embedded in our hearts and our souls. A light, a little light that calls out to shine. To truly love means to let your light shine. Let it shine with each touch and interaction on a daily basis. Let it shine through smiles and through tears. Let it shine in times of joy and pain. Let, love shine, let, let love's light shine in everything that you do, and trust me, when you do, love will return to you over and over and over again. God loves us unconditionally. He loves us in spite of ourselves. He looks beyond our faults and sees our needs. Can we then attempt to love each other as he loves us? Let your light shine, my sisters, so that that glow will grace your path and light your days. Now, with the exception of the Dalai Lama and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., I did not come here today to try to impress you by quoting great philosophers, theologians, world acclaimed orators, or global thinkers. However, I did come here to share one saying from one of the greatest philosophers that the world has never known. Thelma Taylor James, an eighth grade math teacher from a small town in the state of Virginia, my mother. 
one of the greatest philosophers the world has never known. She, like so many mothers, devoted her all to me and gave me mountains of advice that live with me to this day. Of course, as a child, teenager, I feigned interest and rolled my eyes from time to time and pretended to be engaged when I really wasn't, but trust me, I didn't miss a word of what she said. One of the things that she said to me, and this is not an original quote on her part, it's from somewhere, passed down from her mother and community, I believe, never let someone put the key to your dreams in their pocket. And I'm going to say that one more time. Never let someone put the key to your dreams in their pocket. If you want to pursue a PhD degree, don't hand over the key to that dream to a naysayer, a spouse, a sibling, a best friend, or even a professor who doesn't believe you can do it. If you want to start a business or a small enterprise, don't allow the first or even second rejection from a banker deter your aspiration. Keep the key. If you advance on your job, receive a big promotion, don't allow detractors, as my daughter would say, give you some shade. Don't allow someone else's jealousies or their insecurities to stomp out your career ambitions, thereby undermining your career success and aspirations. Surround yourself with people that lift you up inspire you and truly care about your well-being and good fortune. Keep the key to your dreams wrapped securely in your hands. My sisters, we expect great things from you. The cry of our ancestors from the watery graves of the Middle Passage and the tears, broken hearts, and agony of centuries of enslavement cries out to each of you and that cries out to you to make no small plans. Dream big and maintain noble thoughts, high ideals. Aim high, remain hopeful. Happiness keeps us inspirational. Hope keeps us aspirational. Hope sees beyond the challenges of today and envision something greater for tomorrow. Live so that you will give freely, willingly, and lovingly. Let your life be a demonstration of the investment and sacrifices you and others have made. Your preparation at Bennett College is much like a composer who writes a glorious song. Bennett College has prepared you to make your life a beautiful song. So starting today, graduates, let your life do the singing. Give your gifts to those who see you as an example, a role model, and also give to those who see you as hope. Love those who love, feed, and nourish your soul. Love those who do not know how to love. Love so they will see your blessed life as an example to follow, to emulate, and model. You stand on the shoulders of many who have blazed trails and created pathways for your success. With the rest of your life, stand on those shoulders and remain standing until the day comes when others coming behind you will stand on your shoulders. As sister college graduates, whether you are the first in your class, in your family to finish college, or if you are a fourth generation college graduate, as sister college graduates, stand tall and proud today and forever knowing that you have now become a part of the chain of success fashioned by our forefathers and mothers. The chains that once enslaved us now rest at our feet and serve as mere stepping stones to our accomplishments and success for generations to come. There is no doubt of the undeniable role and contribution that men and women of African descent have played in building and forging our nation and our world. A role that our people played with societal distinction and clarity. You today, as college graduates, whether from Bennett, Hampton University, my alma mater, the University of Michigan, Radcliffe, or UCLA, as black men and women who now stand as college graduates, we are the manifestation of the dreams of our ancestors. We are the hope of generations long past. We stand today in their honor, and we will walk tomorrow on their behalf. Go boldly, my sisters, into your future with passion, 
purpose, courage, faith, and above all hope. Always know that God is the source of our abundance and will supply all of your needs. What will you do with the rest of your life? The pages are yet to be written, but live that life as a good life. Live that life with expectancy, intentionality, integrity, strength, and the promise that you will make a significant con contribution to your community, your country, and to a world that is calling your name. May God bless and forever keep you in his grace. Congratulations. What a marvelous message. Thank you so very much, Ms. Copeland. Thank you for your generosity and not coming empty handed. Thank you for that, but also thank you for that wonderful message that you have imparted to us this morning. The Intergenerational Center represents the youngest members of the Bennett College family. Now this preschool laboratory is a five star rating, which is the highest rating you can get in the state. Each year they honor our speaker with a unique piece of art by using their fingertips. And at this time, I'm going to call to the stage little Miss Maya Grace Johnson, escorted by Mr. Vernon and Tim, Tina Johnson, and Jalen Hudson, escorted by Mrs. Jacqueline Hudson, who will present to you a picture entitled Far Above Ruby inspired by the red ruby day lily. Proverbs says, quote, a wife of noble character, who can, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies, end quote. The gift presented today is a token of welcome from the Intergenerational Center and is a picture of a red lily with the children's fingertips. Come forward at this time. So from the college, we have this token of appreciation for your wonderful, inspirational words. You don't have to open it today. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> and we want to thank Ms. Craven for also getting our children together this morning. Please give her a round of applause. She's the director of our intergenerational our children's center. It is now my pleasure to acknowledge the president of the National Alumni Association, Trustee Deborah Love, who will present to us the 50-year honor class of 1964. Trustee Love, every college, school, and university must depend upon its graduates. I can assure you that without the alumni of Bennett College and without their consistent and loyal support, Bennett College would cease to exist. In gratitude, we ask all our alumni, except for the 50th year class, to please stand to be recognized yet again. And now I ask Trustee Deborah Love to come to the podium to present our honorees of the class of 1964. Thank you, Madam President. <clears throat> it gives me great pleasure to introduce this fantastic, fabulous class of 1964. These ladies were protesters. These ladies were world changers. And these ladies still stand tall as they honor and support Bennett College. So as I call your name, if you are able to stand, please do so. If you cannot, just wave your hand so that the audience can see who you are. 
Ms. Emma Hughes Alexander, Dr. Gwen Brown Olive, Mrs. Priscilla Bullock, Mrs. Psyche Coley, Mrs. Sylvia Battle, Mrs. Gloria Edmonds, Mrs. Rosa Elliott, Mrs. Priscilla Austin Walker, Mrs. Claralita Matthews, Dr. Joyce Evans, Mrs. Myrtle Fagarius, Mrs. Barbara Hart, Dr. Joyce Huey, Miss Robbie Jackson, Miss Claudette Jenkins, Mrs. Yvonne Johnson, Mrs. Carolyn Brenda Jones, Mrs. Beverly Kelly, Mrs. Carolyn Kennedy, Ms. Nancy King, Ms. Helen King, Mrs. Shirley Cohen, Mrs. Lillian Chester, Ms. Faye Robinson, Ms. Eunice Smiley, Mrs. Yvonne Spate, Mrs. Alma Stokes, Mrs. Phyllis Taylor, Mrs. Flavia Williams Rostowski, and Miss Eunice, Miss Edwina Davis Gary. I present to you the class of, of 1964, our Golden Bells. You may be seated, ladies. Yes, sir, it is. We have now come to that moment. But you know, that reminds me of a story. <laughs> we've come to that moment we've all been waiting for, the conferring of degrees to the class of 2014. Now again, I'm gonna ask for cooperation so that everyone, every family member, would like to really enjoy this ceremony. We please ask that you refrain from talking. Please turn off your cell phones and other electronic devices so that each name can be heard. And to avoid confusion and congestion near the platform, would you please not leave your seats to take pictures? Only authorized press and college photographers are permitted near the stage to take photographs. And please hold your applause until all the degrees have been awarded so that each family member can hear the name of their senior as well as other seniors. <laughs> Provost Blackwell, please come to the podium. <laughs> Madam President, I present the candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Arts and Sciences in Interdisciplinary Studies, and Bachelor of Social Work. Candidates, please rise. As a, consequence, as a consequence of these candidates having completed all of the requirements for their respective majors, I have the honor and pleasure to present each Bennett Bell for the appropriate degrees. By virtue of the authority vested in me, I confer upon you as appropriate and earned the degrees of Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Arts and Sciences in Interdisciplinary Studies, and Bachelor of Social Work, and admit you to all the rights and privileges 
thereto appertaining. All but the first row may be seated. of Social Sciences and Education, from the Division of Social Sciences and Education, Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, Katerina Carswell. Edwards. <laughs> Janisha Shayla Hayes. Zakara Horn. Gabrielle Johnson. Shamara Lenneman. <laughs> Nicole Demetra Meeks. Patrick <laughs> Atia Resper <laughs> Rachel Robinson Ron Wallace. <laughs> Megan Washington. <laughs> and Prisoner Washington. Bachelor of Science in Elementary Education, Lindsay Harris. <laughs> Nia Hickman. <laughs> and Nick James. Miranda Newby. Angel Pittman. Jasmine Rowe. Shabion Smith. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts in Political Science, Kanisha Battle. <laughs> Zakia Bolden. Campbell. 
Sadia Green. Calista Fair. Sierra Rockington. Lachelle Homer. Sandra Davidson. Taylor Duncan. Christina Oglesby. Amber Rainey. <laughs> Janata Randall. <laughs> Jasmine Swain. India Wilkins. <laughs> and they received the Bachelor of Social Work. Now for the Division of Humanities, Bachelor of Arts in English, Camilla Burwell. Alexandra Reed. Altrice Smith. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts and Sciences in Interdisciplinary Studies, Africana Women's Studies, Sharnika Clinton. Chelsea Hicks. Sierra Jackson. Tanya Jackson. Victoria Jeffrey. Teba McDowell Dominica Stevenson Bachelor of Arts and Science in Interdisciplinary Studies for History, Sabria Jacobs. Kristen Strick. 
Brooklyn. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts and Science in Interdisciplinary Studies, Seth Design Track, Crystal Boone. Shawanda Jackson. Shantia Parker. Lydia Pitt. Samantha Sheffield Sierra Tony in Journalism and Media Studies. Yeah. Patricia Alexander. Yeah. Raquel Bathia. Yeah. Janae Davis.
Kelly Bryant. Patrice Cruz. Danielle Harrison. Alicia Harris. Makia Nelson. Shanice Peterson. Sean Sockwell. <laughs> Lamica Vinegar. <laughs> Janae Walker. Right. <laughs> Bachelor of Science Mathematics, <laughs> Kariah Shannon. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts Psychology, Mariah <laughs> Allen. Angela Gibson Charlotte Rose Jeffries Arabia Johnson Takesha McDaniel. Donetta McFadden. Tremaine Miller Harris. Deanna Smith. <laughs> Chelsea Tatum. <laughs> and Carolyn Thorpe.
applaud the achievements of this wonderful class of 2014. Dr. Blackwell, will you please return to the podium? It is my pleasure to announce the students graduating with honors. As I announce the names of those students, I ask that they stand. Summa cum laude, or laud, 3.8 to 4.0. Kanisha King. Kanisha King, Psychology of 3.975. Sierra Tony, Interdisciplinary Studies of 3.809. And Anique James, Elementary Education, 3.801. Thank you. Magnum Cum Laude, 3.6 to 3.79. Kamisha Woods, Biology, 3.78. Zakia Bolden, Political Science, 3.77. And she's a double major, Political Science, Journalism, and Media Studies. Dominique Mackey, 3.74. Zakara Horn, Business Administration, 3.72. Unique Edwards, Business Administration, 3.67. Ife Mazimoya, Interdisciplinary Studies, 3.63. Janata Randall, Social Work, 3.63. And Lindsay Harris, Elementary Education, 3.61. Cum laude, thank you ladies. Cum laude, 3.40 to 3.59. Sharon Wallace, Business Administration, 3.55. Tyler Wright, Biology, 3.5. Katarina Carswell, Business Administration, 3.49. Sharnika Clinton, Interdisciplinary Studies, 3.46. Epiphany McLennan, Journalism and Media Studies, 3.46. Deshaun Wagner, Journalism and Media Studies, 3.45. Tremaine Miller-Harris, Psychology, 3.41. And Chelsea Tatum, Psychology, 3.41. Congratulations, you may be seated. The President will now give the charge. You've made this a remarkable for year for me as the 17th president. Your leadership, steadfast commitment to Bennett traditions, and rekindling the flame of sisterhood has been instructive and inspiring. Now you must join the ranks of the alumni. Two things I want to leave with you. One, at some point tonight, when the celebration has died down, take a moment and breathe in this moment of your shining moment. You did it. You got to this point. Your investment of time and teamwork with other sisters led you to complete your course of study and earn your degree. We don't give out degrees. You earn it. But more importantly, many of you spread your wings and tried new experiences by traveling abroad or leading an organization, performing in a play, 
or initiating a new tradition like 28 Days of Black, or developing the Flag Corps. You did that. Prompted by another bell or Miss P, still you took the initiative and did it. But most importantly, you have hung in there through many different leaders, faculty members, staff changes, and disruptions, and a few disappointments. You have learned that change happens, but it doesn't stop you. You've learned to be flexible, to adapt, to engage, and to re-engage, and to adjust. All of these are invaluable skills that you will need to be successful in your chosen professions. So stand and walk boldly into the destiny because Bennett College has thoroughly prepared you for the leaders that you must become. And second, understand that you did not get here alone. Our speaker mentioned that. Parents and friends, supporters, loved ones, prayed, sacrificed, cheered, and pulled you through. Faculty and staff challenged you to become independent thinkers and to take responsibility for handling your business. They have propelled you and compelled you to find that unique voice that society may have tried to silence, but that you have found and now must use to advocate for yourself and for others, especially when you find injustices occurring. And you have alumni, trustees, and donors to thank for paving the way with their financial support and their mother wit to provide the soft skills critical to becoming that Bennett ideal, especially the alumni, your sisters, who are shining examples of what a Bennett College graduate can attain. Take time to find a parent, a faculty member, or a staff member, and an alum, and say thank you. But remember, as they have given so much to you, please don't forgive to give back to your alma mater. We need your resources also. Ladies, this has been a most exhilarating year for me. And tonight, and for many nights to come, I will pause and look up to the heavens and thank God for allowing me to serve as your 17th president. Congratulations, class of 2014. Of the Bennett alumni to join me in reciting the traditional Bennett blessing, beloved. And for everyone to remain standing for the alma mater. Following the, following the alma mater, the audience may be seated. I'm sorry, please remain standing for the benediction and the recessional. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. The Lord has been mindful of us. He will bless us.
Bennett sisters. As a way of benediction, please receive these words from the book of Ruth and also a Psalm of David. Don't urge me to leave you or to return from following after you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Where I die, where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me and be ever so severely if anything but death separates me from you. Now may the Lord answer you when you call in distress. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May God send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. May God remember all your sacrifices and accept your offerings. May God give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. We will shout for joy when you are victorious and we will lift up our banners in the name of the Lord. May the Lord grant all of your requests. May God be with you until we meet again. Amen.
Chao.